Welcome to another edition of James Martell's Coffee Talk, where James, successful publisher, speaker, and author of Online Success for Non-Techies, talks frankly and openly with experts from within the internet marketing industry about strategies and techniques you can use to develop a successful online presence for your personal or corporate brand. Here is your host, James Martell. Yes, it's really great to have you with us. Today, we're going to be speaking with a leading social media expert, Stephanie Liechtenstein, about simple and affordable ways you can use Twitter to open new markets, develop new prospects and customers, and to build overall awareness for your brand, both online and within your local community. Twitter is an absolute powerhouse with over 500 million active users as of 2012, generating over 340 million tweets daily and handling over 1.6 billion search queries every single day. Twitter has become one of the top 10 most visited websites on the internet and in this session Stephanie and I are going to discuss ways you can take advantage of this new and exciting marketing channel. Stephanie Lichtenstein is the president and founder of Micromedia Marketing, an international social media agency. Throughout her career, she has worked with internet retailer top 500 companies and Hispanic brands. Stephanie has become an industry advocate, public speaker, and blogger for what matters in social media. Stephanie, welcome to Coffee Talk. Thank you for having me. Now, we talked about, uh, in another Coffee Talk, Facebook. Uh, Twitter's a completely different animal. What's the difference between the two, and why should people be also paying attention to Twitter? Great question. People should definitely be paying attention to Twitter. Now, it's becoming a lot more popular than it was before and a lot more mainstream. And I can give you one example. I was just watching the Olympics. I don't know. Have you been following along with the Olympics? Every single day. Exactly. So everyone's watching the Olympics. And if you notice, within the Olympics and in all of the commercials, a lot of the commercials and the messages that they have They have the number sign in a word. So a pound sign Olympics is the official hashtag for Twitter. What does that even mean? That means that people from all over the world are on Twitter tweeting about the Olympics while it's happening live while they're watching it. So it's just amazing the kind of communication you can have with people that you've never met. So that's one of the big differences that I want to make about Facebook and Twitter. Facebook, it's social and it's also very personal. If someone adds me as a friend on Facebook, I usually look, oh, who do we have in common or how do I know this person? Usually you want to know that person before you let them see pictures of your puppy. But on Twitter, it's more about having conversations about general topics. It's not about if I know you or not. It's what do we have in common? What can we have a conversation about? And almost every single tweet has a link to something. So it's all informational, it's all conversational, and it just opens the doors. It's amazing the kind of interactions that you can have with people that you've never met. And I'm talking not only your regular Joe, you can also send a message to your local news station or send a message to a celebrity. I was very surprised to see a lot of, I think it was Michael Phelps, he was being interviewed. He had just won another medal. And they asked him, oh, you know, what are you excited about? What's been going on? And he said, oh, little Wayne sent me a tweet on Twitter. And little Wayne's like a rap artist that was just saying something good back to Michael Phelps. And out of all the things that he picked to highlight, that was one of them. Another thing that I thought was interesting was BMW had a commercial. And probably the commercial that they put out, if they put one out in Canada, where you were watching it, James, was different from the commercial that I saw in the U.S. But in the U.S., their commercial at the end, it shows the hashtag. What the hashtag means is it's just a keyword, a topic that people can follow. And they put out the number sign, BMW Team USA. And everyone has been using that tag so they know this is the keyword I can use. This is the keyword I can follow. What's great for BMW is they're converting their commercial to be interactive. Because now everyone that watched that and wanted to say something about the BMW that they were featuring to send out a message and BMW can actually track that keyword. What does that mean for people that are not BMW? What does that mean for the local business? Well, guess what? You can go in and have conversations about this. So you can follow the Olympics hashtag and connect with people. Now, 
I'm not going to say to follow the Olympics, but if it has nothing to do with your brand, that might be more social than anything else. You want to follow keywords that actually have to do with your brand. I'm meeting with someone next week that found me through social media that is a local company, and they're starting to grow, and they sell Epsom salt. So they work with athletes. So guess what? The Olympics happens to be a great hashtag for them. Interacting with people in real time, people that you've never met, it's just something that we've never been able to do before. And now we have the chance to do that. When can we do that? We can do that in an unlimited amount of time. Now, on Facebook, I generally tell tell businesses and even people, don't make too many updates because people might unlike your Facebook page because you don't want to have too much activity going on. People like to see more about their friends and things like that. But on Twitter, it's a different ballgame because you can have tweets going out minute after minute, and it's actually not going to bother anyone. That's what Twitter's about. It's about conversations. It's about connecting with people. The news breaks on Twitter. People find things out before they can see it on a news station or on TV. So as a business, you can target local keywords. You can target keywords that are related to your brand. You can monitor what people are saying about your brand. You can do that in real time. On Facebook, you can't see what someone's saying on their personal page or monitor that if you're not friends with them. On Twitter, you can. So it's just a whole other ballgame. So with small businesses being busy and limited resources and in many cases just working on their business, here we have this whole new method of traffic generation and customer acquisition. We talked about Facebook in the other session with Twitter now. What questions do they need to ask themselves, or how do they determine if Twitter is right for them? So I normally help people pick the right platforms for them, and nine times, if not ten times out of ten, I always recommend Facebook and Twitter. And there are a lot of other platforms, but if you look at any website, those are the main ones that people are focusing on, and that's where mainstream is. That's where your audience is. I do recommend being on Twitter. It's so easy. It's only 140 characters. How much time out of your day could it really take for you to write up 140 characters? It's not a lot of time. There are tools out there that can help you with time management. You can even plan one day out of the month what you want to send out on Twitter, and you can actually schedule it out so that things go out on a daily basis or even multiple times a day without actually having to do it manually every single day. There are ways that it can be very time effective. It's good for a small business because there are a lot of keywords, like I said, that we can monitor that are specific to your location and to your industry. How does a business set up their name? I know a lot of businesses would like to have their exact name, twitter.com, Sawbox Pub. That's not always the case, and there's no need to panic over that. We talked about this with Facebook. In an ideal world, we want all your names to match. So if your name on Facebook is James Martell, then we want your name on Twitter to be James Martell. But there might be another James Martell that got on Twitter before you. Luckily, you grabbed your name, but that's not always the case. Twitter will give you other options. Sometimes they might add numbers, so it might be James Martell 1 or James Martell 2. You don't necessarily have to add numbers. I prefer adding a location, so that way it helps when people are searching for your name. There's also fun ways that you can play around with it. Like I have a client. He's a local company that's involved with real estate, and his website is langhorn.com. That's his last name. We wanted to grab that name for him. Unfortunately, we couldn't do it. A lot of people with that name had already taken that. So we came up with something that goes with his brand, and now this is going to help with the overall picture of his branding, and we found Langhorn TLC. And a lot of the things that we're going to do with his brand are related to the word TLC, which also mean other things for his company. And now we were able to secure the name everywhere. So try to make it short because on the Twitter username, you only have 15 characters. So sometimes if your company is too long, what I recommend, and I had to do this with my own company, on Facebook, our name was Micromedia Marketing, facebook.com slash Micromedia Marketing. On Twitter, too long. I have no choice. What I did was, and what a lot of people do is, you just take out the vowels. So the only word that was cut out, actually, I didn't cut out all the vowels, but I cut out the vowels in the word marketing, Micromedia, M-K-N-G. There's like abbreviations for words, and there's also ways where you could just cut out the vowels of the words, and that way 
you can make it fit into the 15 characters. And that's an easy way where people can still find you because there's two places to put your name on Twitter. To give you an example, when you set up Twitter, you have the name that we're talking about, which is the username, which is James Martell. And then you have your full name, which is your real name. So actually, my name's a better example. My name on Twitter is MicroStep. There's no way Stephanie Lichtenstein was going to fit on Twitter for my personal name. So MicroStep worked well for me because my company is Micromedia Marketing. So I tied it in together. It still fits with my brand. And on Twitter, everyone knows my name is MicroStep. In fact, people call me that sometimes because it's easier. But if you look at my page, if you go to twitter.com slash microstep, you'll also see Steph Lichtenstein, which is my name. So you have both options that you are able to add in there. It could either be the same name or you can show the personal name behind the business account. So you have those two options so that people can actually see. And that's what we usually do is if we're responding to someone, we click on their name to get a little more information and we like to stay. Someone tweeted to me just 19 minutes ago, if you're looking at my account, if I click on it, I know who this guy is, but his name is AKA Gorilla. I am going to include his name at AKA Gorilla because he monitors that and he'll be able to see that and he'll be more likely to respond to me if I mention at AKA Gorilla. But I might say at AKA Gorilla, thank you, Greg, for sharing that link with me because when I clicked on it, I saw that it's his Twitter name, but he also has his real name. And when I interact with people, I like to show what their real names are, and they usually do have that information. So make it a little more personable, and when you set up your account, get your username the best that you can. Also, you can write your real name or your real company name at the top, and in your page up, it'll say full name, and then you write that information in. The second thing you want to do is develop your bio, which is 160 characters of space. And if you look at twitter.com slash microstep, it shows, and what I like about this on Twitter is it picks up all the links. So if I say that I'm the president and Purdue deal at Micromedia Marketing, but it, it actually shows the Twitter handle at M-I-C-R-O Media M-K-T-G. That's the name that fit in the amount of spaces we had. If you click on that, you say, what's that? What's she the president of? It goes to my other page. So Twitter picks up all these things, and then it picks up my URL, which is clickable. So I have my URL in two places there. But you know what? The more the merrier. I want people to be able to click and go to my website. And then it shows the hashtag, which is the number sign with the topic. Now, you have to think about what topic do you want to be known for? I want to be known for social media. That's what I do. That's what I talk about. And I have affiliate marketing because I happen to work with people in that industry, and I've also talked about that subject a lot. So you need to think about what information do I want to have out there? Do I want to have a personal and a business page set up for Twitter? Now, I recommend having one set up for your business. If you're the face of your company, like myself and James, which, you know, you're out there, you're attending networking events, and you want to have conversations with people, you enjoy social media, then sure, set up a page for yourself as well. But if you don't have the time or you're not interested in that and you just want it for your business, having it for yourself doesn't mean it's not going to benefit your business also. Both pages benefit my business a lot. But you really want to set up and start with the one for your business. And make sure you have information where people can find you, a link to your website, and a hashtag. You can start doing research. At the very top, there's a search bar. You can start searching. You type in a keyword and search. You want to see if people are actually actively talking about the topics you're thinking of. Another thing that happens when you first set up your page is it starts showing and recommending people that you can start liking, and you do that based on topics. So if you're a charity, It'll show you a bunch of great charities that you can follow. If you're interested in sports, it'll give you a bunch of great Twitter accounts to follow. And that's a good place to start. Sign up your page and start searching and following some of the people that are already active on Twitter that you want to have conversations with. You mentioned when we talked about Facebook that this is in the area of what are we going to tweet about. Actually, before we do that, we got to have a little chuckle at the language of Twitter. And I find it funny now that I can actually say these words without even thinking about them, but I call 
when I first discovered Twitter, and I learned all these new phrases and tweeting, and uh, it was just funny. So for those that are just engaging it, it really isn't so bad. It's kind of a fun network, isn't it? It's a fun world, this, uh, this thing we call Twitter. You know what? It's actually very easy and simple. It seems like it's this whole other world that's going on, but there's only 140 characters of space. So it's basically, Facebook has a lot more elements where you have the pictures and you have, you just have so much more going on, where Twitter is just your name, your bio, and then your tweet. But yeah, it's good that you asked me this because I did pull up a link that's very easy. So if anyone wants to look at this a little later, they can just Google Twitter Business Glossary or they can Google Twitter Glossary and they'll get direct links on Twitter that explain some of the basics, and I'm going to go over that with you right now because these are things that you need to know. I've mentioned hashtag a lot, but I bet you people have gone to movies or watched commercials or watched even TV shows and have seen this thing in the corner that says the name of the show that they like, and they have no idea what that is. And what's been going on is people have been having conversations about the same things that you're interested in online and companies have been able to monitor what's going on. And I've seen this in stores and what's cool about the ones that I've seen in stores, I went to this great pizza shop, Cazola's, they have a TV screen and on the TV screen they're showing live tweets of people that have posted something with the keyword and it shows up on their screen. So someone might say, oh, what a delicious pizza I just had at Cazola's or, you know, I brought my brother here for the first time and he loved it. And you see all these updates going up on the screen. Actually, my cousin and I were really enjoying the pizza. And on the screen, we realized that they had beer there. And we said, we didn't know they had beer. And we saw it because of all the live updates. So anyways, it's a good social way to interact with your clients. So let's go over the glossary. I'm just going to pick a few main things that you really want to know about Twitter. Just the lingo so it makes a little more sense. So number one is the mention. When you log on to Twitter, you'll see the home page and you'll also see when people are mentioning you. It's like the at sign for the email and you'll be able to monitor all your mentions. What that means is if I'm recording a show with James, I actually sent out a tweet saying James and I are recording back-to-back coffee talks, but I tagged at James Martell. So if I had just posted James, unless James happened to be watching his Twitter at that very moment, he wouldn't have seen that message. It's just like on Facebook when someone tags you in a photo. That's how you find out you're in the photo. Well, a mention, that's how you find out that someone's mentioning your name and that they're talking about you. Don't get overwhelmed by all these different tweets that are going on. Just make sure you're monitoring the mentions about you or your company. That's what you want to keep an eye on. So the mention is when someone mentions your Twitter username in their tweet. A tweet is just kind of like a status update and a message that people share on Twitter. It could be as simple as what I shared, which was I'm recording back-to-back coffee talks with at James Martell. Stay tuned. The next time I share about it, I'll actually send them a link to where they can hear the recording. It's just sharing updates like that with people. It doesn't all have to be about what your lunch is. It's actually more about very specific business-related things that have to do with your industry. So that's what a mention is all about. A retweet, now I compare this to email. If I get an email that I really like and it's something I want to share with people, I actually forward that email on to other people. That's kind of what a retweet is. If you see a tweet that you think is relevant to your audience and you want to share that, or you see something and and you want to promote it for someone else, you just click and you can retweet that message. And what happens is it just shares that message with your followers. I also want to mention replying to people. So it's just like replying to an email. If someone mentions you in a tweet and they're asking you something or they're saying something that requires a reply from you, you just click the reply button. It automatically generates their username and you're able to write whatever you want to write to them. Then there's a message area. The message is a way for you to say something privately. Sometimes I might want to give someone my phone number, but I might not want to give like maybe my personal number on my Twitter stream. So that's something that I would send someone on a message or I might send them my email or I might ask them a question. It's something that not everyone that's following you needs to see, but it's something that you want done privately. Now, 
there's a little key to the messages, though. They have to be following you in order for you to message them. It's kind of like, you know how on Facebook you have to accept a friend request in order for them to be able to write on your wall? Well, on Twitter, they have to follow you so that you can send them something in private. So what I usually do is if I want to say something privately, if they're not following me, if it doesn't work, it means they're not following you, you just send them a message and say, hey, I want to send you a DM, which is what their message is called. It's called a direct message. So people abbreviate a lot on Twitter, and they do that because there's not a lot of space. So if you can say, you know, I want to send you a DM, can you please follow me back? What does it mean to follow someone? To follow someone means that you go to their Twitter account and you decide to click them to start following and to start seeing the Twitter messages that they're sending out. Now, you can have conversations with people without actually following them. So the only time you have to follow someone is if you want them to be able to send you a direct message. But ideally, you do want to follow people back that are following you. First, you want to look at their account. So that's what I generally do. If someone follows me and I don't know them, it's not like we have to be friends for us to follow each other. That's Facebook. That's different. I just want to look at their account and I look at their Twitter stream. What have they been tweeting? It takes me 10 seconds. I just look and say, what have they been tweeting? And I look at their picture, their URL, and their bio. Sometimes I just look at their bio. And if it's something that interests me or I think that they're active, I'll follow them back. If it's something that has nothing to do with what I want to talk about, I might not follow them back. But one person can follow someone without the other person following them back, meaning it doesn't have to be both ways, like on Facebook, where both people have to accept each other as friends. So that's something else to know. And then the last thing that I want to go over is the hashtag, which I've been mentioning over and over again, and that is the number sign, so the pound sign, and it categorizes certain words and certain keywords. They're usually related to topics, locations, events, TV shows, things like that. It's usually not a hashtag for a person. The person is usually what the username and mention is about. The hashtag is usually the topic. The other thing that I like and I'm trying to do, and I got this from Martha Stewart, which is kind of random, but I did. She used the pound sign ask Martha. So every once in a while, she would go on there and answer questions, not to every single person, but whatever her time allotted, and she was sharing recipes and sharing tips. And that's something that I'm starting to do with social media. It's a way for me to keep track of all these questions that I get. That way I can monitor everything and know that those people that are using that tag want to ask me a question. That's a brilliant idea, and you combine that with the fact that they can only type in 140 characters. They'll have to get right to the point, so it should be a nice, concise, clearly thought-through question. That's a brilliant idea. And my hashtag is not Ask Stephanie Lichtenstein. It's Ask Micro Steph. And I'm using that as an example of my name. You want to make sure it's something that people can spell, and it's not going to take up too much of the characters, so you want to make sure it's pretty short and easy to remember and easy to spell. You mentioned when we were talking about Facebook, and there are some parallels here. With Facebook, you don't wake up in the morning and decide, what are we going to post today? But rather to have an overall plan and strategy in place. And I would think the same goes for Twitter. It's different, but yes. So what happens is you always want to have a general social media strategy so that on a daily basis when you make your updates, it's all planned out and it's all strategized for what's the best thing to post on a Monday. Depending on what you have going on in your business, Monday might be a slow day for you. So Monday you might actually want to incentivize them through a promotion. Tuesday might be your busy day. So Tuesday you might just want to share a picture of your busy store and an information about what you have going on because you just released a new line or you just did something for back to school and there's a lot of activity. But you want to share that information with people. The same thing goes for Twitter. We follow the same strategy. The only difference is, in addition to posting that one daily strategy or twice a day, and if you do twice a day, you know, on Facebook, you space it out. On Twitter, there's no problem with doing back-to-back updates. So once you do your daily strategy, you log in, you monitor your mentions, you monitor hashtags that you might want to be following that are related to your brand. You send out some tweets, you send out your daily strategy, 
But then you also have ongoing conversation with people. So you dedicate as much time as you can to those hashtags and those mentions, and you start having more conversations with people. And that can go on back to back all day. I mean, I literally used to tweet all day before I had my company. And then I put it to some good use. But it's so great for a business. There's someone that I'm going to start working with that is going to do massages. And then I have a chiropractor that's actually my chiropractor. Well, they're going to start working together and cross-promoting each other, even on social media. But they're also using social media and Twitter as a tool to monitor people that are talking about, oh, I'm in back pain, or oh, I'm looking for a good chiropractor. Or if people do, and I even use Twitter as a big resource. I do polls where I ask people questions. Where do you think? Actually, I did this the other day. I was looking for a dress to wear to a 70s party that's going on at a conference that we're attending. And I asked, where's a good place to get a 70s outfit? And people respond to me. And that's how I find things out. So if, as a business, if you're actually taking advantage of this and monitoring what people are saying, you can personally reply to them and say, you know what, that's something that we do. And if you have questions, we would love to help you. Or here's a little more information about us. Or here's what we can do. And send them to your Facebook page that might have more pictures. Or send them to your blog. Or, or have them give you a call. A lot of times we'll have people call us or email us when it's a conversation that's a lot longer than 140 characters, but that's how we make the initial contact. I had a local PR company the other day. They found me on Twitter. They needed help with social media for their clients. Now we're partners, and that all started because I'm in there tweeting about social media all the time. She was looking for social media in the area I was in, and she found me because I was the one that was there. So that's something that every business can apply, whether it's in a very specific area or in a broader area. That's something that is easy to target. And a lot of times, it's just like ongoing content that's going out there. It's just how much time can you spend upkeeping that. And I mentioned you can do it in 30 minutes to an hour a day, but it's, it's always better to have a plan and to know what your main goals are, and then do all the additional things. There's a lot of other things that can be done with Twitter, and we'll get into that a little bit more. Steph, if you could, I've got an idea here. Just try and give some visuals to this. Are you in front of a computer? Probably a dumb question. Go to sawbuckspub.com, if you would, and maybe listeners as well. If you happen to be in front of a computer or you have a smartphone and you've got a connection, head over to sawbuckspub.com. Now, that's a pretty snappy little site with some nice uh, sliders and graphics and lots going on at the pub. Do me a favor. Have a little quick look at these sliders. These, of course, I would think, would make great tweets. What would you do with this? Whatever you're doing in your store, whatever you're doing on your website, in the rest of your marketing, just take that and translate it over to Twitter and to Facebook and to any platform that you're using. Yes, there's a lot of things going on in these slides, so let's start with... One of the first ones. Okay, so, you know, they have private parties, and this is something that probably makes them a lot of money. And you know what? If you just went and had a couple beers there, you might have not known that this place has private parties. So that's something that you can definitely integrate into your strategy, and you can let people know a little bit of insider information and say, hey, did you know that we host private parties, if that's your main focus for your business and you come up with a really good plan for it, you can search keywords and you might even be able to find people that are in the area that are talking about birthday parties or talking about doing a special event and you can monitor that and really be on top of it and, and reply to anyone that's asking their friends or that's asking, where is a good place to host a special event? So that's one thing that you can do. The other thing is they really want people to join these special clubs that they're promoting. This one has to do with football. So in this case, they're promoting Monday night football, and you get the first beer free every Monday. Who wouldn't love that? I'm going to go to this place. I'm going to come visit you, and I'm going to go have a, a free beer on Monday. So this is something that they're promoting. So obviously you would schedule this for Monday. You could even schedule a tweet to go out on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday a couple times ahead of time and on Monday during the day. And you can schedule all of these. So you can literally do this a week in advance. And actually ongoing, you could schedule 
maybe like a month or a week ahead of time, depending on how far you want to go, and you schedule tweets to go out. You don't just schedule any tweet. You schedule Monday Night Football, and you tag ESPN, you tag NFL. You also write first year free every Monday, and then you tag your location. Also, you want to send out tweets that are related to the teams that are playing so that people that are fans of those teams that probably want to watch the football game will be more likely to come in to that area. So you want to tweet to your location. You want to be relevant and tweeting to people that are fans of the teams that are playing. ESPN one day, if they were doing a great job of monitoring their accounts or maybe even the football team that was playing, they can send you a retweet and they can send a message about your bar because they love that you're giving free beers away and they see something that they like and they retweet it to their followers and it turns out they have 100,000 followers and all of a sudden you have all these new people that are starting to follow you on Twitter. So that's why personalizing the tweets is important and doing a little research so you can search on Twitter or you can even Google ESPN Twitter and find out what the Twitter name for ESPN is. Obviously, it's ESPN, but that's not always the case. You don't want to tweet to the wrong account. You want to make sure that you find the right account, and then that you find and you tag it with the location. And also have those keywords. Think about the keywords that you're going to put in there. And another thing is don't just put that information out there and expect that these people know where your pub is. Add a link to either where they can RCP or on their website, oh, the map is below, so where to find us. Just so we're clear now, so when you say tag, so what would you do? You would type the little tweet. we got 140 characters. You'd let them know Monday Night Football, maybe the time. The teams that were playing, let's say it was Seattle Seahawks. Say their Twitter name was Seahawks. Would you put the pound symbol or pound Seahawks, or would you put the little at symbol Seahawks? I would do my research, mm-hmm. and I would look at both. And if both fit, I would do both. Now, the reason I want to tweet I, I found them online, and their their name is at Seahawk. The reason I want to tweet at Seahawk is because they have 92,000 followers. I'm looking at them now, and they might tweet me back. But I also want to look at their tweets, and I want to also want to look for a hashtag. By the way, if you look at the Seahawks Twitter account, there's a little a blue circle with a check mark. That means that it's a verified account. That means that it is the official Twitter page, and it is them. So that's good to know. And I also want to look at their tweets, and I would also search tweets to see what are people tagging, what keywords are people using. Three hours ago, there are four tweets that all have the same hashtag. Wow, now I know this is a great keyword to use. I want to interact with the Seahawks. And then I'm going to click on the tag, and the tag that they're using is Bing Training Camp Live. Okay, so I click on it. The Seahawks are not the only people using this hashtag. There are a lot of fans and a lot of people that are saying the same thing. Then there's the hashtag Seahawks. So obviously it depends on the amount of space, and we're not talking about the training camp. What I would do in this exact example that you're talking about is I would say Monday Night Football free beer at the Starbucks pub. The Seahawks are playing the Dolphins, and I would tag it. I would use the – now we talked about the difference – For a name, you want to use the name of the team. So you do at Seahawks. And for the topic, I would tag it with Monday Night Football, and I would find the hashtag for Monday Night Football. The Oakland Raiders, when I looked this up, they tweeted with MNF, and it means Monday Night Football. And within the last hour, there's a lot of tweets going out with that tag. So that's what you have to do is you have to think, in the amount of space I have, What people or companies can I mention? I want to add their username. What hashtags can I tag this with? A lot of people are going to be following Monday Night Football. Let me tag it with Monday Night Football. And let me send a link to our address so that they know where to go. Something that has more information because most of the time if you look at tweets, they do have a link. And the reason they have a link is to send a call to action, and to show that additional information about where you can find something or anything that you're referring to, usually that link is going to help you. The amount of space you have is usually just like that call to action, and then you send them to the link. So 
Back to the topic of scheduling then, you could literally, you mentioned, you could sit down the week before and you could line up everything you got planned for the week or possibly I would think even the month Mm -hmm. and schedule that all up in advance so now you know that it's nicely taken care of and it's all ready to go out at the right time? Yes. Now, if you do that, don't forget to monitor your mentions and your keywords because that takes care of your regular tweets and your strategic tweets but what about the people that are asking you questions or that are talking about what a great time they had watching Monday Night Football at your pub? You want to go in and make sure you're monitoring. So the best place to schedule tweets that I always recommend and we use as a company is called Hootsuite, H-O-O-T-S-U-I-T-E dot com. It's a free tool for the first five platforms that you add. So you can actually have, you know, you can monitor Your Facebook, your Twitter, they just added Google+. Plus. You can monitor LinkedIn. So it's great. You don't have to log in and out of different accounts. You can actually monitor things from one place. What's great about Hootsuite is it has a scheduling element, and it's so easy to go in and plan your calendar. When you go to type, it's actually the little icon of a calendar. And if you click on it, you click on the day, you click on the time, and you click on schedule. And that's it. It schedules it for you. The other thing that Hootsuite helps you with is something that it says add a link and then it has a button that says shrink. Now, it also says in the area where you can write something, it says compose message. It'll take a minute, but once you look at it and you play around with it, it's easy because it tells you this is where you compose a message, this is where you add a link. Where you want to schedule, if you scroll over, it says scheduling. If you look at it, it's, it's a calendar. So it ends up being very easy to use, easier than you would think. So what you do is you add the link. So I want people to go to my calendar and to be able to see how to get to the pub and see the calendar. So I want to send them directly to that link, but that link has a lot of characters in it. So I want to add more space, so I want to shrink it. So I actually copy the link, I paste it, I click on the shrink button, it shrinks my link. What good does that do to me? It gives me a lot more space to write in the message that I want. And on top of that, you can see how many people actually click on that link. So Hootsuite is a fantastic tool. I definitely recommend using it. And it's something that it might look like there's a lot going on the first time you log in. And and we do help people set these accounts up. But it also has a fabulous Get Started tab that has quick links that helps answer questions on how to use their platform. You mentioned in the pub. Got all of these guys. Let me just kind of run with this for a second. You've got a bunch of guys and gals sitting in the pub. They're watching the football game. So you now they're engaged in they're in the store, so to speak. And uh, same for any other type of brick and mortar business or a chiropractor or someone. How do you incentivize? We didn't get a chance to talk about this with Facebook, but I would imagine there's probably something similar with Twitter. What would you do? I mean, it would seem to me that you've got all these people in the pub watching the game, how can you get them involved with their smartphones and maybe making some noise online, Twitter or Facebook, or liking your pages? What would you suggest? You're already giving them something for free. But why not have them do something for that free thing? Something so easy that they can do on their phone with a click of a button. If you're giving something away for free, you have to check if you can say beer. You might say, like, beverage. You know, you want to be careful with how you say things. Usually we're not always dealing with something like alcohol. Obviously, you want to make sure that people are of age and things like that. But if you're giving something away for free already, say they're giving away a free appetizer. If you're doing that anyways, have people talk about it to their friends. And people will do something like that for free. So when we tie it into mobile, people can check into locations now. They can go in and you know, they'll check into Foursquare and that's like linked to their Twitter and things like that. Let me talk about one example that I love. It's a great way to get more activity on Twitter. It's an easy way to incentivize. So I went to a sushi restaurant called Sushi Maki in Brickle. On the table, and this is why showing in the store that you're on Twitter or that you're on Facebook or showing like some sort of a call to action maybe on the menu is a good thing to do. But on our table, it said, check into Foursquare and, you know, get a surprise. We were intrigued. 
So we went on Foursquare, we checked in and said, if you take a picture with the manager and you send out a tweet, they picked the name Go Tsushimaki and they got that name everywhere. And they had people tweeting with Go Tsushimaki. So what happened was, we took a picture with the manager and we're smiling, we're at Tsushimaki, we're excited, we don't know what the surprise is going to be. We post a picture and we tweet at Tsushimaki, we have the hashtag and everything so that it explains to you in the check-in what you're supposed to do. At the end of our meal, they brought us the biggest dessert tray that like you could ever imagine. And we took pictures of it and we posted it on Facebook and we tagged each other in it and all of that. So guess what? Instead of just giving someone a free dessert, have them tweet about it or post a picture on Facebook or post a picture on Twitter and then they get it and chances are they love sharing that stuff anyways and people love things that are free, especially if they're delicious things like beer or dessert and you're doing it anyways. So incentivize them. Of course, if someone says, oh, I don't have Facebook or I don't want to do it, fine, you're going to give it to them anyways. But now you're going to multiply or by so much the amount of activity of, on a daily basis, people talking about you, not only to themselves, but I have 3,000 followers on, on Twitter. So I was sending out tweets about Sushimaki, sharing the picture. I have 3,000 followers. My friend has another, you know, couple thousand followers. People retweeted it. Sushimaki was monitoring that, and sometimes they retweet people that share that. So it's fun for everyone. And then with a click of a button, not only does one person see it, but so many more people see it, and they don't do it once a day, but you can do this all day long in your store or in your restaurant. And it's something that you're already giving away for free anyway. So why not have people talk about it publicly and, and share that experience? What's amazing about that and so powerful about that, and I would say to those who are maybe new to social media, just to put an emphasis on it, again, Steph said this goes out to 3,000 people, and that is it's more than just an ad. That's an endorsement or a recommendation. That's showing a customer having fun in an establishment, and, of course, uh, that's far more powerful than any advertisement that a business could put out. Wouldn't you think, Steph? Absolutely. It's way better for someone else to say something good about your business than for you to speak about yourself. And something that I've said before, and I'll say it again, 78% of consumers trust peer recommendations, only 14% trust advertising. Social is changing the way that people purchase things and that people have experiences. If I'm going to go to a pub and I want to find a pub to go watch the football game, I'm not just going to pick a random pub around the corner. I'm going to look and I'm going to see what I care about it, and I'm going to see what friends say about it. And if you have ongoing so many people talking about you and it's all positive and, you know, you're doing this, you're going to get a lot more business from it. We mentioned in the Facebook session, and of course we're going to be talking about Pinterest and others with you as well in other coffee talks, but there's those two types of people that are typically out there. Those are the do-it-yourselfers that would prefer to learn how to do this themselves and take this on and kind of internalize it and they love social media or, or they're intrigued by it at least and they think, hey, you know what, I can, I can do this. And then there's the other type of people that are thinking, you know what, I can see how maybe investing a little bit of time, effort, and energy in this by hiring somebody to take care of this for me will probably see great returns because my newspaper advertising isn't doing what it used to do, and mm -hmm. Yellow Pages is sure not doing what it used to do, and maybe this is the new media that I'm looking for. So let's talk first about your services and the services that you offer with Micromedia Marketing and talk about what people can expect if they were to engage a professional like you. The first thing that we do that's very important with any social media platform is we work on setting up the accounts the right way. I have a lot of people come to me and say, oh, but I already have a Facebook and Twitter. I'm sure you do, and that's fantastic, and I'm glad you do, but when I look at it, there are always these great tweaks that we can make that make it even better so that people can find us more easily, so that it makes more sense. So we like to make sure that the setup is done properly with nice graphics. And that's the cool thing about Twitter, too, is you can have a great online presence and look as big or as small as you want, but you can look so great. So we want to make sure that that's the first step. And the second step is to have a strategy. So you're going to have a lot of ongoing tweets, and those are going to be more conversational. 
between yourself and one specific user that you might want to engage. But you want to have general strategy and daily tweet that you send out that has a plan of action. So on this day, we really want to engage people that are interested in Monday Night Football that want to come drink a beer, and those are the people that we want to target. So you want to focus on a daily topic. We help clients and we develop daily strategies for them so that they can have that plan of action. And then it becomes a lot easier. So it's kind of like having all the puzzle pieces. We put it all together, and then you plan things out so much more easily and things are more organized once your strategy is in place. Then we do use Hootsuite, which I was mentioning before. It's our management tool that we love for Twitter because it's a great way for us to set up different keywords and actually monitor for you and show you this is what people are saying or this is how many people tweeted out your website. This is what people are tweeting about when it comes to Monday Night Football within your area. And we can actually in real time see everything that's going on and keep an eye on that. And of course, we monitor the mentions that you have. Now, just like I can monitor it for you and have someone on my team dedicated to doing that, we can also train people to do that in-house if you want to keep it in-house or you think you have someone that's really interested in social media that can do a good job and can represent your brand well online, then we can also train them. We can set them up with Hootsuite and then we can show them how to set up additional keywords in the future and show them how to schedule and all those good things that they need to know. We can give them all the tools that they need to run it internally or just to have us run it for them. So what would somebody be looking at as far as costs? I know you covered this on the Facebook talk, but maybe you could go through that again for us as well. I don't think I mentioned the strategy set up in the Facebook because we do have a lot of different services. They're all related to social media. They all specialize in social media. But I'll give you a general idea. One thing that we do for clients, specific to Twitter that I love, is we do live tweets. And we cover a lot of events, and I did a case study with one of our clients. Now, granted, he has a company that's going viral, and he was on a TV show, and that has given him a lot of press. But he's been the face of the company. So we recommended to him, hey, we want you to live tweet and answer questions to fans that are tweeting with the hashtag and things like that. When he live tweeted, and this is on a larger scale, he normally was getting about 10,000 followers a day while he was on the TV show. When he was live tweeting, he got 20,000. So it's doubled the amount of follows that he got. The reason for that is when you're monitoring during a live event that people are very actively tweeting, and this could be something like the Olympic or Monday Night Football, if it's relevant to your brand. Remember, it has to be something that's relevant to your brand that you'll want to talk about a lot. So you go in and you start monitoring and having conversations with these people, and you start following them, you get so many followers back. And we actually run that for clients. So we do live tweets for them, and we charge $100 an hour to do live tweets, but we do very hyper-targeted events. So we look for events that make sense for you, and we try to schedule them for our clients. And we have one client who sponsors local events, so local startups, anything related to tech that kind of has to do with uh, his industry. So he goes in and he sponsors some of those events. And what we do is every time he does that event, we're live tweeting along with the hashtag for him, and then we're following, and we always see a big level of increase in the amount of followers that we get. So that's a great thing to do. If you're talking about a setup, we actually have a very cost-effective rate. Um, we set up more than one social media platform. So we'll set you up with Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, Pinterest, and YouTube. And we'll actually also do a strategy for you that has a lot of good information about how you can post daily on these platforms and also explains how each platform is different. That actually starts at $1,000, but with uh, Coffee Talk listeners, we're going to give them 10% off, so you'll save $100 as long as you mention that you came from Coffee Talk. We plan out a content calendar, and we also look at how we want to post differently in a different social media network, and we give you recommendations on other things that you can implement like in-store promotions and contest ideas and the whole nine when it comes to the strategy. And that's important to have before you can start tweeting and that's fine. But when you hand it over to someone at your company, or even if you hand it over to us, we're very capable, but we want to make sure that we're on the same page with the strategy and we're meeting the goals that you want. If you're the pub, but your main goal 
is you really want to host parties and you want to be known for that, then that's going to be a big focus of the strategy. So that's important to know. Once that's done, we do engage in uh, full-time management for our clients, and that's something that we do generally Monday through Friday. At times, we do have clients that want to do things on the weekends, and we can help them with that as well. Um, but generally, what we do for management is we start at 12 50 a month. That's what we generally would charge a brick-and-mortar business for managing multiple platforms for them and for also engaging them on weekly calls because, like I said, it's important for us to know what your goals are and what's going on internally. And we do like to match the rest of your marketing and show you recording and give you updates and do all of that kind of thing. So it's very in-depth. And on the training side, I've said this before, I don't mind if there's one person or 10 people. We train different kind of groups. It's more about the time that I spend. And I personally do the trainings myself. And we charge that on an hourly basis. And we charge 125 an hour for training sessions. And something that James and I spoke about before is how long does your training sessions normally take? That really depends on your level of knowledge for social media, but it normally takes about five to ten hours. And then, ideally, we usually help oversee the strategy and keep you up to date on social media trends, like on a on a monthly or weekly basis after the initial training is complete. Sounds like such a such a great opportunity for businesses and the 1250 is intriguing because I know in the local paper here for and I see it all the time and in the past I, I would be all for it but today I just cringe you see a small business pull their checkbook out and, they, and it actually interestingly enough it costs you $1,250 here to get a full page ad in the paper and that ad may work or may not but in two or three days that's in the trash and it's gone it's a one-time payment and you either did it right or you don't otherwise you got to pay pull it out again and this is talking about getting onto google plus pinterest possibly but that's extra i know but facebook twitter linkedin and the nice thing about the internet unlike newspapers that have a shelf life of two or three days tops the internet, this isn't going away. And talk about a method of engaging your customers. And I have a feeling when small businesses really start to embrace the internet and they start to really dig into these networks and hire people like yourselves to take care of that, they're going to be saying goodbye if they haven't already to local newspaper and yellow pages. <laughs> I know I've yeah. seen that happen a lot. Absolutely. And you're completely right. The information you put out there, it stays there. And if you set up Google Alerts for your company, you'll start seeing tweets come up every day for your name, and you start seeing that that's getting indexed by Google, and people start finding that information. And not only does that stay long-term, but we are doing daily updates you know, on all the pages. So you're very covered on all those platforms, and those are the key platforms. And we can really target local businesses or even on a bigger scale, anything that you want to target, those keywords are out there. And I'll leave you with one more tip that we like to use, especially when you're getting started. There's a website called wefollow.com. What's cool about wefollow, it's kind of like a directory for Twitter. It kind of shows you what the top tags are. So if you're not sure what tags to use for your industry, or you're not sure who's in what cities or who to follow, it's very cool to be able to see the top entrepreneurs, the top social media, the top cities. And if you start clicking on them, these are people that you can engage with. One of my clients is in Toronto. Toronto is the sixth top city on Twitter. New York is number one. They started engaging based off of this list because I've been working with them for about a year now. They did exactly what I was telling them, and they're one of the, the great clients that really does listen and really does implement the time. And for the past couple months, they've been working on a new project. They've gotten about 440 new followers, all very targeted because they only want to focus on Toronto with this project. And their Twitter name is at FS Local Toronto. Take a look at what they're doing. They've been doing this by only investing their time. They used WeFollow as the directory that I shared with them. And it was the perfect place for them to make interactions. And you know what? All those people that were the most influential people in their city have been responding to them. So that just goes to show you, and that's just a good example. And I like giving this example because they just started and it's new, and they're doing a really great job. 
I was just going to just mention as well that, of course, uh, you're also an instructor at the School of Internet Marketing, and you've got a course that for those who are maybe the do-it-yourselfers, maybe you could talk to that just for a quick moment, and then we'll wrap her up. Absolutely. I'm very excited with what we're doing with the School of Internet Marketing because I talk so much about social media and give great examples, but sometimes, I, especially even on this call, there's so much more to cover. And in the School of Internet Marketing courses, we're going to go very specific into all those details so that you can do it yourself. It's very easy to learn. And we're going to go from the basics of setting things up, and I'll show you exactly how to set up your account, how to search for what you want. We'll show very specific examples. You'll be able to see visuals. Because one thing is hearing it, and the other thing is seeing it and seeing me do it for you. And that's going to help you tremendously. We're going to look into tools that we use, like Hootsuite, like we follow. We're going to get into even more specific tools that can help you with growing the amount of followers you have and targeting keywords. And it's going to save you a lot of time. It's just amazing when we start digging into those keywords what we're going to find. And, of course, for those busy business owners, maybe uh, too busy to attend a course, it's also great for employees to come in and hang out with Steph and learn exactly how to do it. So, Stephanie, thank you so much for joining me for another edition of Coffee Talk. It's really been great to have you. Thank you. And one last thing I want to say is anyone on Twitter that has any questions in 140 characters or less, if you tweet me with the pound sign, ask micro Steph, I'll be happy to answer your Twitter questions. So how would they spell that? Would it be pound at? Yeah, the number sign, so pound, A-S-K, like ask, like if you're asking a question, A-S-K, micro, M-I-C-R-O, Steph, S-T-E-P-H, and you can email me at Steph at micromediamarketing.com if it's longer than 140 characters. Perfect. And what was your website, last final thing? Micromediamarketing.com. Perfect. Stephanie, thanks again. and uh, Thank thank you, James. Bye-bye. To learn more about James Martell, the School of Internet Marketing, and how you or someone on your staff can quickly and easily learn how to develop a successful online presence for your personal or corporate brand, visit theschoolofinternetmarketing.com. That's www.theschoolofinternetmarketing.com.